Jason Smith here from TBM Brakes, and today I want to go over the importance of pad compound selection when running one of our drag racing brake systems. Different brake compounds are used to fine tune setups in all forms of motorsports. Drag racing is no different. On a drag car, if you're running a heavier, larger style brake kit, say like one of our medium duty front brake systems, an extremely aggressive brake compound is not needed, and this is due to the clamping force being produced by the larger piston area and the larger calipers provided. But when you're going to a system that is set up to maximize weight reduction while still producing the appropriate amount of stopping power to get you stopped at the drag strip, making sure you are achieving appropriate line pressures and that you're running the appropriate pad compound are both extremely important. Many factors come into play when deciding what compound you need. Are you running eighth mile? Are you running quarter mile? Are you running eighth mile at quarter mile tracks? Are you running at really short tracks? Do you pull the chute every time? Um, does your vehicle see any street miles? These are all extremely important factors, but the two most important are vehicle weight and vehicle speed. We have created a graph based on the BTUs generated when shutting down from an eighth mile pass depending on your weight and speed. This graph will help point you in the right direction when it comes to the pad compound you should be running with our brake kit. The two different compounds we offer with our drag race kits are our 85 compound and our number one compound. Our number 85 compound has an extremely high coefficient of friction both cold and all the way up to 1500 degrees. Although it will work cold, it must see a lot of temperature in order to wear properly. It is extremely abrasive and wears rapidly unless it gets a lot of heat into it. Our number one compound has a slightly lower coefficient of friction and a slightly lower temperature ceiling, but this compound is far more rotor friendly and wears a lot better throughout the temperature range. So let's go over a few examples. As you see in the chart, a 2,800 pound car trapping 150 in the eighth should be running the number one compound. A 3,300 pound car running 200 miles an hour in the eighth should be running the number 85 compound. If you go to this chart and you find your weight and speed is borderline between the two compounds, this is when you need to think about your driving style and, and where you race. If you're running eighth mile events at quarter mile tracks, you're pulling the chute, you're probably not dumping as much heat into the system, so that will push you towards the number one compound. But if you're running at really short tracks, you don't pull the chute, you're hard on the brakes, then that's going to kind of push you towards the number 85 compound. Now let's say you've got a 3,400 pound car, you run quarter mile events, eighth mile events, and against manufacturer's recommendations, the vehicle sees some street use. Well, at the quarter mile, let's say it sees 200 miles an hour, eighth mile, it's seeing 150, and in, in street conditions, it's seeing 45, 50 miles an hour. This is really three different vehicles that would require three different brake systems if you're looking to fine tune weight reduction and maximum stopping power. But let's see what we can do. On the street, the number 85 compound should never be used. It just takes too much temperature for that compound to wear properly, and you just cannot generate it on the street during normal cruising uh, speeds. So you'll want to run the number one compound. Now, if you look at the eighth mile, 3,400 pound car going 150, the number one compound's perfect. You move into a quarter mile where you might be seeing, you know, speeds of 200 plus, that's when I would really recommend the number 85 compound. And for this situation, I'd recommend buying a second set of pads, have the number 85 compound sitting in your trailer and drop them in when you're running quarter mile events. Could you run the number one compound? Sure, but the number one common, remember, has a lower temperature ceiling and lower coefficient of friction. In an emergency, that 200 mile an hour pass, if you lose both chutes, the number 85 compound is gonna help you stop sooner and it's also going to stand a lot more temperature before you start experiencing brake fade. If you have any questions on what compound you think you should be using, give me a shout at the office, 805-987-7867, or shoot us a message at info at tbmbrakes.com.